one, go. Good morning. Thank you so much for coming today. And so you're here today to interview for the clinical supervision and determining if this is going to be a good fit for your residency. So I'm so glad that you're thinking about me. So I wanted to start off and just ask a little bit about yourself. Okay, fine. My name is Mike Morgan. I'm uh, here again hoping to get some supervision towards my licensure uh, as a professional counselor. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to work together and everything will work out fine. Awesome. So can you tell me a little bit about how you decided to become um, a, a counselor? Well, I think I decided to pursue some counseling education back when I was working a lot uh, for a living. I've been uh, in school right out of high school. I went into college, but I kind of left that to work for a living. And uh, after working for a living for a while, I found that I had a, a knack, if you will, for talking to people about their difficulties and whatnot. And so, I thought I'd pursue that in an educational realm, and I like the course of education, and so having gotten to where I am now, I'm ready to make it a profession. Great, that's an awesome place to start. So what's been your experience with supervision? Well, just recently I had another supervisor who has retired, uh, and uh, uh, we, had a, we had a fairly good supervising relationship, and so, I, the hours that I need are still, I, I didn't get very many hours completed with her, but uh, I have been in supervision before, and, uh, and I was working uh, at uh, an agency where she was working. In fact, I was getting my residency kind of experience there, so I'm hoping to fill that gap and get a new supervisory relationship built and, uh, and continue my journey towards licensure. So tell me what you're expecting from a supervisor. Well, again, as uh, you know, as I continue to learn the various ins and outs of uh, this business, there's a lot of practical knowledge that I'm hoping to pick up in supervision. There's a lot that I would like to get in terms of different perspectives on the on the, on the approaches that I've you know developed over the little bit of time that uh, that I've been that I've been working with clients. And hoping for the, the wisdom of your experience to be able to give me some insights on how to shape myself as, a, as an effective counselor. Okay. So, just to delve a little bit more into what you want to develop, tell me a little bit more about that. Well, there's certainly techniques that I can recall from the textbook learning and a little bit of practical experience that I've built up so far. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and some of those seem to have uh, an application in certain settings and with certain people and seem appropriate in some settings, but sometimes I you know, find myself kind of lost in, uh, in working with different types of people and different types of situations and different type of, you know, clinical predicaments, if you will, I sometimes feel a little bit lost. So widening my range of, you know, of technique you know, okay. uh, and, and, and developing, you know, certainly developing a little more confidence and, and how to approach things in the moment as they as they come up in the, in the counseling setting. I certainly feel that need to, to build a little bit more of a, uh, a repertoire, if you will, of, of skills. And, uh, and again, working on that inner confidence to be, you know, to be a helpful presence to other people. Mm -hmm. Are there any techniques that you've already been working on that you feel you've got a grasp on or are there any techniques that you want to really learn? Right. Well when I was in my studies I found myself uh, particularly attracted to the uh, to the mindfulness kind of realm of, uh, of cognitive behavioral therapy. In mm -hmm. fact DBT was an interest of mine. I like the skill sets involved in DBT. I like the mindfulness as a foundation there. I think it has a lot of application with a lot of different people in a lot of different situations. So, and then the mindfulness cognitive therapy, mindfulness-based cognitive therapy has a lot of good, from what I've seen research backing it up and working with people who have depression. And, uh, and I think it can be helpful in a lot of other uh, mood disorder type situations. So that basic foundation is something. And then, of course, there's person-centered elements that I try to integrate into the work that I do. And, uh, and then the standard cognitive behavioral therapy. Okay. 
That's a great place to start and we'll definitely be able to build upon that. So what populations have you worked with already? Well, at this point, I think I've been seeing mostly later adolescents and young adults. Okay. Uh, the agency that I'm working at happens to have a lot of military folks uh, that, are, uh, that are coming in for services, and so I've been working with young married couples and, uh, and some of their adolescent offspring. Um, so, uh, and, and, and you know, a few outside of those parameters, some younger children and maybe some more towards middle-aged folks, but mostly I think I've been with the, the later adolescents, teenagers, the young adults. Okay. Is there a population that you're least comfortable working with? Um, the younger children, sometimes I feel, find myself at a loss. You know, I, uh, I've been trying to look into and research some various techniques for working mindfulness with younger children. And for some, there's, you know, there's some things that seem to be applicable and, and, and that work. And then uh, for some younger children, I find myself just having to resort to something along the lines of a play therapy thing, which I'm not really trained in and I'm not really comfortable with. Okay. So you're looking more for an outside supervisor, an off-site supervisor? I have had an on-site supervisor, so yes, since that has not, you know, since she has retired, yes, off-site is going to be probably the, the preference that I need to go for. So let me ask you this, if I were to ask you to do something that you didn't really agree with in one of your sessions, what would you do? Hmm, that's a good question. I, uh, I certainly don't want to challenge somebody who I know has a lot more experience than myself, but at the same time, you know, I want to, you know, and, and at the same time, I want, to, I want to be able to expand myself. So, I mean, being able to get in touch with my own discomfort with doing something relatively new or something that maybe I don't agree with, maybe I, to some degree, have to rely on your insight and your experience to be the teacher. Okay. And so, you know, I'd be willing to walk through some discomfort in doing things that may not be particularly agreeable to me because I have to be, you know, in a learning mode. Okay. Well, we'll definitely be able to work on some of those things and developing more of that confidence. And the last question that I want to ask you is, how do you take care of yourself? What are your self-care habits? Ah, yes. And I know that counseling can be very, uh, you know, a pressure-filled kind of a commitment. And, uh, and so I take time for myself and I enjoy time with my wife and my family. We do a lot of camping. And uh, for me, getting out into nature is a big part of getting away and just rejuvenating myself. Uh, over the course of a single day, I will take little breaks during the day, and again, being a fan of the mindfulness, I practice it myself. I take deep breaths. I, I, I get I get exercise, and again, whenever I have an opportunity, I try to get away to another world and just let go of uh, things in order to recharge the batteries. If awesome. You will. awesome. Well, from what I've heard, heard today, I really think that we could have a wonderful supervisor and supervision relationship. But what questions do you have for me? Okay. Well, again, I'm working a schedule where I'm seeing some people at this agency still, and I'm wondering what kind of availability you might have over you know the time, and whether we can synchronize our schedules, and whether I'll be able to, you know, be able to get in to see you on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be available, you know, at uh, at, at times that are going to be uh, doable for me? Absolutely. Um, while you're seeing clients, I'm also seeing clients as well. So I would have schedules built in throughout, throughout my day, morning, evening, or late afternoon, depending on which day works best for you. I'm even open to doing some weekend on Saturdays. So okay. if you have a Saturday morning or a Saturday evening that would work better for you, we definitely will be able to work out a schedule that's going to be convenient for the both of us. Okay, wonderful. I would be certainly attracted more, I think, to those evening hours and opportunities and that way I can leave my weekends open for the family and for and for getting away from it all. So. Sounds great. I don't see that being a problem at all. Okay. Do you I'm have any like further that. questions? Um, at this time, uh, no. Um, uh, no, I think that's, I think that's, uh, I'm looking forward to working together with you. We'll see what comes up. Great.
Well, I'm a proponent of homework. So I am going to send you away just to think about the things we talked about today. And if you have any further questions, to email them to me so we can set up a second um, session so we can get together and work out some specifics of dates and times. Okay, wonderful. One of the questions that I might have is along the lines of your expectations for me. I'm sure that you've been doing this supervision for a while now and you've had a lot of folks that you've worked with. And my previous supervisor uh, was uh, kind of uh, loose in their structure and expectations and eventually things evolved into a, into a situation where I didn't feel like I was learning as much as I could be. So I want to be prepared myself for, for what you expect from me. And mm -hmm. uh, I hear homework and, yes. you know, well, not a big fan. I can understand <laughs> the value there. And yes. so uh, that would be wonderful. Is there anything else that you might expect from me in terms well, of my performance? The reason I set up for a second time for us to get together is because I go over the expectations. I go over um, confidentiality. I go over all those those processes, and that way we can go further into making a determination of if this is going to be something we want to move forward with. Okay, I will look forward to us getting together again. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.